Welcome to everyone to our third edition of our BT List live webinars. Um, I'm going to go ahead now and post into the chat a link to our show notes, um, works that we will reference throughout the webinar. You'll find um, citations there, so you don't have to too hurriedly uh, take notes yourself. I want to extend a very warm welcome to Professor Jacobus Nodier for joining us from South Africa. Welcome, Professor. Thank you very much, Drew. And we have a special guest with us as well, Dr. Phil Noss. Welcome, Phil. Thank you very much, and thank you for the invitation. It's great to be with you. Thank you, gentlemen. And uh, as well, thank you, Harry, our um, Zoom facilitator. Um, it's no small feat to pull off these webinars and it takes a team. So I just wanna thank everybody who's, who's helped, especially Harry. Well, um, let me go ahead and introduce our uh, main guest. Jakobus Nadier is senior professor in the Department of Hebrew at the University of the Free State, Bloemfontein, South Africa, where he teaches biblical Hebrew, linguistics and Bible translation. He is co-chair of the Linguistics and Biblical Hebrew Seminar of the annual meeting of the SBL. He serves on the steering committee and the three editorial committees of the 20, uh, 2020 Afrikaans Bible Translation Project. He is Bible Translation Consultant for the Dinka Cham Bible of South Sudan. He serves on the advisory board of a number of journals and handbooks, including the Bible Translator. He is the co-author of the Biblical Hebrew Reference Grammar, now in its second edition. Um, as well, he has um, published in Biblical Hebrew Linguistics, edited multiple volumes on the interaction of translation studies and religious translation, the author of over 48 chapters in books and almost 200 articles in academic journals. Very excited to have you here with us today, Professor. I can think of no better guest to walk us through, to help us appreciate tr translation studies, but also help us to gain greater insight into the interaction of Bible translation and translation studies. So thank you again for being here. Thank you for the privilege to be with you. Now, our special guest, Phil Noss, is um, series editor for this exciting series that is out, uh, keeps publishing volumes. The first in the series was A History of Bible Translation, that was first published in 2007, and then there was a revised edition in 2011. Um, then last year in 2019, there was a gold mine of a volume published called A Guide to Bible Translation, People, Languages, and Topics. Um, I bought this for Kindle. It was $10. It is perhaps the best $10 you can spend right now anywhere in the world to get an access to a wealth of information on Bible translation, the history of Bible, just fantastic volume. Um, Phil, as series editor, could you help us understand a bit um, the, the purpose of this series as well as where this, what this series hope it, hopes to accomplish? Thank you, thank you very much for the opportunity, as I said, to be with you and to say a little bit about the series if you know about the American Bible Society, um, early in this century, they started a um, center for, for an institute uh, for Bible studies, Bible scholarship, called NIDA Institute. And the deans then, the first one, and then the second one, particularly Bob Hodgson, were particularly interested in developing uh, a, a research and writing program and that was centered then around the idea of history and history of Bible translation. So we're trying to summarize where we've been over the last couple of centuries that we've been working you know, actively in Bible translation. So the first uh, book in that series <clears throat> was the one that you referred to, History of Bible Translation. And that was an edited kind of summary of different perspectives on translation itself. Then we planned a series of monographs, and a couple of them were published. The fascinating one on Ghana, early Ghanaian translation, a fantastic study on Persian. And then we wanted a summary kind of thing. Well, <laughs> none of us were quite in the position of doing a, a, you know, a comprehensive encyclopedia series, but we tried to do sort of a, a combined dictionary that eventually turned into a guide and uh, I'm just uh, delighted to be here this morning 
um, uh, sharing here <laughs> the, the stage, as it were, with Professor Nodé and uh, <clears throat> his wife, who I'm sure in the background, Cynthia Nodé, who were major contributors to the guide in its final form and, and final shape. And the emphasis that we were able to turn then in the guide into history, but translation studies as well. So I'm delighted to be here today and thank you very, very much, uh, uh, Drew, for your interest in bringing us together. Thank you. Yes, no, it's a joy. Thank you for that. Well, let's jump right in. Um, Professor, a number of years ago, I came across this story in BBC News where there was a translator, a non-biblical translator, who was arrested in East Africa. And the crime was, um, was that a tourist had asked him to help record a video in Swahili for the people of the nation. She had just so much, she had so much appreciated their country that she wanted to record a, a video in Swahili so the people could know how much she loved it. And she started off her video by saying, hi, my visit to Tanzania has been beautiful, gorgeous. The people are fabulously wonderful and friendly. Greetings are always jumbo, happy to be here. The land is beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. The animals are wonderful. Well, in the video, the Swahili interpreter, he translated her words thusly. You Tanzanians cry a lot about hunger. Every day you cry about hunger when you have flowers at home. Why don't you boil the flowers and drink them? It's not good to cry about hunger. Then in the video, the tourist, go, the tourist carries on. She says, the variety of animals and people you see in Tanzania is incredible. It's unlike anywhere else. It's just fabulous. The guide, in turn, translates it as, you are asking your president to cook for you. Do you think your president is a cook? Can you get busy? Even boil your clothing and eat it. Well, the video goes on like this, and she says again, it will be an experience to savor for all your life. Tanzania is fantastic and beautiful and incredible and just remarkable. The guide concludes by saying, get busy in every corner of the country. The president can't leave the state house to cook for you. You have to cook for yourselves. Wow. When I read this story, I, I was just bowled over. What an, what an incredible story. Help us, Professor, see this story, interpret this story through the lens of translation studies, if you will. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, so, uh, you are correct. Um, the tools of translation st studies will be of great help uh, to interpret uh, and to understand this story uh, 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 as you said, uh, was published uh, uh, as a news report by BBC uh, in 2017. Uh, so uh, I can do a full analysis, but that will take us up uh, a, a whole afternoon. Uh, so what uh, I'm going is, uh, I'm uh, only going to give you the broad lines of how uh, translation studies will interpret this uh, kind of uh, act. And um, so uh, the first thing to note is uh, this is what we call consecutive interpreting. Uh, the, that is a, a technical term used for oral translation. And then it, gets, uh, it got into uh, BBC News and uh, uh, there is then a transcript. So it become uh, a written uh, 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 text. Uh, so uh, uh, it falls this within the discipline of interpreting studies uh, together with translation studies. And uh, so uh, uh, that, that is a first in, important thing. For uh, s some would say they are in, uh, uh, different, but interpreting and uh, uh, a translation uh, uh, is viewed by some as the same uh, basis, uh, for example, Daniel Child and uh, Otto Kader and uh, 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 interpreters who say it's the same uh, kind of mechanisms which uh, are working in translation studies and in interpreting studies. Um, for others, um, interpreting and translation as uh, is independent, uh, that does not matter. But what is uh, uh, what we ha have here is uh, 
what can be described within translation studies and the section of translation studies is descriptive translation studies provide you with the tools to uh, to uh, to interpret this and um, you will first start with a model for example that of Lambert and uh, uh, you say Lambert and Hen uh, Hendrik van Gorp uh, who actually say on describing translation so then you can actually see if you look at the video uh, then you uh, see uh, it's uh, uh, proposed as uh, um, uh, uh, as a, a translation and it's the same a sentence length and also the melody and uh, uh, then you probably will uh, see that in the uh, words of the tourist and the words of uh, in Swahili they are also word play but uh, uh, that uh, the next step will let you, uh, you to see oh uh, they uh, there are differences and that will uh, let you to the analysis uh, or the analysis will let you to itamar evans suhar's polysystem theory and uh, which uh, sees translated literature as part of a cultural literary and historical system of the, of target language and um, uh, in terms of our translation knowledge, uh, 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 this uh, so-called fake translation is related to the genre of pseudo translation or fictitious translation. And in the Guide to Bible Translation, there is an article on uh, pseudo translation. And the pseudo translation is a term used to refer to texts. Uh, which have uh, been uh, presented as translation with no corresponding source text in other languages. Uh, 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 so uh, what you have here is a, uh, a, uh, a, 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 a presentation of a, of a, um, uh, a, a fictitious uh, translation. And um, so uh, 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 what we then uh, have here is that uh, 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 the tour guide uh, uh, want to convey a, a particular message. So a, a pseudo translation is used when you can't use an actual straightforward uh, saying. So uh, as a first draft, uh, draft, it seems to me that the guide utilized a pseudo translation um, uh, uh, by conveying the, uh, the message. The tourist supports the president because the president has a similar speech to the nation that uh, they, they have to uh, um, uh, 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 cook their own food and uh, they must not complain about hunger. So, uh, uh, the, uh, so the guide uh, then uh, 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 speaks, uh, say to uh, uh, our president speaks like a tourist. Uh, mm -hmm. So uh, if the guide wants to criticize the pre uh, president, if he want to support the president, uh, that is also so the context I do not have. Uh, that uh, we will uh, need to enter. Tour, uh, tour guide was accused of uh, casting the tourism ministry in a bad light. Uh, so, and secondly, as protesting against the strict f uh, fines for spreading so-called fake news. So uh, uh, this could be another uh, thing is to uh, try to uh, test the court. Uh, is this really fake news? Because mm. he speak like the president, and mm -hmm. uh, was the mm. uh, the tourist really hurt in this process? Mm. Uh, uh, so, um, so the pseudo translation. Uh, uh, the question is: Is it really bad? And mm. um, so, uh, when you get into court uh, uh, translation studies. Uh, so, if the system in Tanzania. Uh, is still fair, the judicial system, uh, then uh, 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 you, uh, the tour guide can get in a translation study scholar, say this is an act of pseudo mm. translation to mm. uh, 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 convey a certain uh, message. 
And uh, so, in fact, in Bible translation, this happened, and it happened in South Africa. In mm. South Africa, uh, Afrikaans was uh, not acknowledged as a uh, language to be used in the church. So it was either English or um, uh, 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 Dutch. And um, then, uh, so uh, uh, you, you couldn't use any Afrikaans uh, language in, in, in the church. So uh, 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 this uh, 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 activist write a, a novel, uh, The Queen of Sheva, which is based on so-called Hebrew manuscripts, which were discovered in Zimbabwe. And mm -hmm. he then uh, translated the so-called uh, 16 um, uh, columns of uh, Hebrew uh, mm -hmm. into Afrikaans. And uh -huh. what would he uh, want to say? Uh, uh, look, Afrikaans uh, 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 can be used as a cultural language. You can uh, use language to talk about the Bible. You can talk about the history and uh, so, and th that is a Siru translation. So there are always people very unhappy when you have a Siru translation. So I think if a tourist found out, she would be a bit unhappy. Some of the readers or the uh, Queen of Sheba told, oh, can such an author uh, 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 tell lies? So he was accused as a liar. But at wow. the end, uh, you have Afrikaans, uh, the, uh, 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 it took a few years further, but at least the Bible was then translated uh, into Afrikaans. So you have uh, 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 one important thing in translation studies is Siru translation and the role of Siru translation. And I think with fake news, it come again on the thing. It can be used in a bad way. Uh, mm -hmm. Some people talk about the scandals of translation, which can happen. But uh, on the other hand, uh, uh, this uh, can help you in a way to uh, actually uh, uh, serve a purpose. So uh, uh, the one thing is a, a translation as a purpose, and I think that is what we can uh, get away from the story. Okay. Wow. Thank you for that expert analysis. Yeah, I noticed that your, um, your analysis was decidedly descriptive. But there's one assumption in what you said that um, some scholars may want to question, and that is whether translation is even possible at all. Um, I'm thinking of Emily Apter's 20 theses on translation, where she said she starts, the very first thesis is everything is translatable, and her last thesis is, um, sorry, let me try that again. Her first thesis is nothing is translatable. Her final thesis is everything is translatable, and then in between, she has all sorts of things. Uh, one of her theses is, is, translation is the language of planets and monsters. So I've just got to know, um, I want to question this assumption, like some scholars are doing, is translation indeed possible? So uh, translatability is determined by the nature of alterity. Alterity is otherness. Mm -hmm. uh, so... Uh, 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 alterity is a prominent feature uh, of a source text or of uh, or a source culture, and uh, uh, so alterity, uh, as a concept within translation studies, has been explored in insightful ways by uh, Kate Sturge in a book representing others: translation, ethno ethnography, and the museum, who describes alterity as the assertions of the distance of culture uh, or familiar, uh, familiarity, uh, the opposite as the proximity of culture. So uh, to determine uh, how possible translation is, it involves uh, uh, this dilemma of distance. If it's too far, uh, it becomes harder and harder to translate. If it's uh, near, it's, uh, if the cultures are very near to each other, uh, it's uh, very uh, uh, translatable. Uh, so uh, uh, one fundamental debate um, uh, involves then the question of how great the gap between alterity uh, and uh, familiarity is. And uh, some people argue 
Uh, it is too deep. It's ultimate unbreachable. Translation mm. cannot occur. Whereas other anthropologists, as well as li linguists such as Chomsky, Noam Chomsky, argue that the dilemma of difference is shallow and mm. breachable. And translation is possible uh, in, uh, in this regard. Eugene Nider follows uh, Chomsky in arguing for the translatability of all texts. Sturge, mm -hmm. by contrast, argues that ultimately it is impossible to translate culture in such a way as to preserve the integrity of alterity and simultaneously to assert proximity. Hmm. And what about your personal conviction? Now, as a translation consultant, uh, see, uh, what we have to um, uh, look here uh, uh, is uh, 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 Emily Apter is a professor of French and comparative literature at New York University. And uh, what she is doing here is apply translation studies within the field of literary translation. So in her book, uh, she argues for a new basis for the study of comparative literature as an academic discipline. Uh, and this book um, uh, uh, falls within comparative literature and not uh, pro uh, proper translation studies. And um, what uh, she uh, achieved here is um, she utilized a field of translation studies, and there is a comparison to us as Bible translators, uh, is um, uh, uh, that uh, you bring uh, a translation studies within your field of comparative literature or uh, uh, of literary translation. And um, uh, 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 the book was, uh, uh, published in 2006, I think more or less, uh, and uh, that is just after 9-11. Uh, 9-11 uh, is a crucial uh, shift in uh, uh, our uh, uh, thinking, and um, uh, what also happens in that time is that uh, uh, remember, uh, uh, sit, uh, uh, quick, uh, we begin to uh, uh, talk about uh, connectivity, uh, 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 which we have uh, now this afternoon, where the whole world becomes flat and uh, you have people uh, across the whole world uh, in this uh, web, uh, webinar. And um, so uh, uh, that happened in 2005 and uh, you have immediately the implication of globalization and also localization. So the one, uh, the world become flatter, but then people lose their identity. Mm -hmm. And, uh, uh, but uh, a reaction of that uh, is that uh, you want to get your identity back and then you localize uh, stuff. So uh, also in the guide to Bible translation, there you will find an article on globalization and localization. And that is the issues what she is uh, working here, uh, 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 try to address in her, in her book. And um, what is there is that uh, uh, the uh, translation zone she's talking is where these different cultures uh, come uh, to uh, 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 to uh, come together and which needs uh, need, uh, needs to be breached. So uh, what is very important here also is to notice that uh, 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 to work in comparative literature. It means you have to compare literature across uh, cultural borders, uh, German, French, Spanish, but also African literature. There are uh, up huge upcoming literature uh, in the uh, Afri uh, of, uh, African continent, for example, also in the mm. Far East, and to make really comparisons in ja uh, Japanese literature. And uh, so, uh, the, the fact is uh, you work in translation and suddenly translation 
become very important for literary uh, 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 criticism and also for comparative uh, studies. So uh, what uh, she also, so when she said nothing is translatable, mm -hmm. uh, then she said that uh, the, or, uh, the original is always and inevitably lost in translation. Hmm. Oh, your microphone. You, you just got muted. Sorry for there this. Uh, there, my wasn't talk. <laughs> <laughs> there wasn't me, I promise. Uh, so uh, the, ori uh, the original is always and inevitably lost in translation and global translation um, uh, 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 takes in over there. And then on the other hand, everything is translatable. Mm -hmm. And that is uh, 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 what I talk about in the beginning is this ex uh, 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 distance, it does not yes. pertain only to Bible translation, it uh, pertains uh, also to uh, uh, other uh, translations. Here's, for example, um, uh, a, uh, uh, in the discipline of translation studies, there is a very nice book, the Rutledge Handbook of Literary Translation by Kelly Washburn in Ben van Wyk, which is published in 2019. And um, there they uh, handle with all the issues uh, in terms of translation, in literary translation, when you look at that, uh, uh, that book could uh, be also, uh, 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 for example, uh, relevant for Bible translation. In fact, there is a text, uh, a, a chapter on sacred um, uh, uh, writings. And then uh, uh, also in terms of religion, so when we talk about Bible translation, it's Christianity, but uh, then you have also uh, the uh, 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 it's uh, studied in a field of mm -hmm. religion. It can be in a faculty of theology, but there are also in academia uh, the comparison of uh, of religions. And uh, so uh, 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 this is a very important uh, 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 stuff uh, is done in the past. For example, Michael the Younger and uh, Christiana Tietz they have translating religion what is lost and what is gained uh, right. their book and uh, uh, john bondia also talk about the agents of translation in which uh, uh, the the uh, uh, the uh, uh, where you have uh, uh, the uh, uh, the role of the translator in um, a religious uh, uh, translation. So uh, uh, there's also a book by uh, Lynn uh, Long, Translation and Rel Religion, Holy Intranslatable. So uh, this is uh, within religious studies, but it also pertains to translation studies uh, in, uh, in uh, 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 general. Uh, mm -hmm. And um, <clears throat> So I, I think I uh, try to answer something yeah. of, uh, uh, of, of what you ask. No, yes, thank you. No, that's certainly um, going to push the conversation forward, especially as this may, the idea of translatability might be a new idea to some of us to even question whether uh, translation is possible. But uh, you know, this leads me to then ask, how might our contemporary assumptions or expectations of translation differ from those of, say, um, the third century BCE or the first century CE? How are our uh, assumptions or expectations of translation different than uh, preceding generations, say, even millennia ago? Yeah. Okay, uh, so uh, what is happening is that uh, uh, in, uh, uh, from about in, uh, 1959, uh, the uh, Roman Jacobson uh, wrote an article uh, 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 which uh, on translating and um, that influenced uh, the whole field. It influences NIDA. After NIDA you uh, uh, get a person, uh, uh, James Holmes, and uh, what happened is that uh, you get uh, 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 the discipline uh, uh, of uh, translation studies. So translation studies is one of the very young uh, disciplines and um, so uh, uh, and uh, a discipline means that uh, uh, 
uh, uh, they are collective knowledge, it's uh, collected, and um, so uh, 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 they uh, provide, homes provide, for example, the first framework for uh, the discipline, and um, so also uh, 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 what uh, 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 it, it it uh, brings a lot of knowledge together in the sense of uh, 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 theoretical knowledge, uh, a theory of translation, various kinds of translation, function, uh, descriptive, and then on the other hand, you have within the discipline applied translation studies. Uh, uh, Luc van Doerslaar, for example, in uh, uh, his uh, um, uh, 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 creation of the Benjamin's translation studies bibliography, he also worked out a map. So we have at this stage a lot of knowledge organized around translation, uh, uh, the, uh, the uh, lingual, uh, lingual mode, uh, the media, the uh, translation studies approaches, theories, research, and uh, also how you actually uh, perform a um, uh, a, a translation, and um, so uh, the fact is that uh, 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 the field uh, uh, emerges. If you look at the, f uh, uh, for example, Newbert and Sch uh, Schreber, where they actually uh, 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 say uh, it's not only linguistic, it moves onwards, what we have is that translation studies is an emerging field and um, uh, 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 with a new uh, uh, frameworks and methodologies uh, and um, uh, also a lot of in, uh, societies uh, which are being formed um, in the sense that uh, 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 examples, uh, the IHATIS conference, uh, 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 the EST, there's also now an association for translation studies in Africa. So this is a whole kind of uh, development which uh, 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 occurred. And um, so in the uh, past, uh, what you have is uh, uh, the, uh, if one go back, um, uh, to uh, uh, a thousand years ago, uh, then uh, the uh, contemporary assumptions and expectations of translation are similar as these of ancients. So people normally see a, uh, a gap between it, uh, our stuff replace it, I think it's a wrong percep uh, perception. Translation either as a process or a product is em uh, emerging. Our atten attention must be focused on the ways in which ancient and contemporary assumptions and expectations interrelate in the process of emergent translation. It might be uh, uh, fruitful uh, uh, to consider translation as a complex phenomenon rather than considering it in terms of turns over uh, periods. Mm -hmm. So uh, in the beginning, in, from Greek antiquity to 1960, translation was a tool of philology and early terms used uh, were very vague, but it's not wrong. Translation, uh, translators presented a justification for their approach in the preface of a translation. So there was no translation theory or a, a, a discipline, and um, uh, uh, what we fear, uh, uh, what we noticed uh, uh, in uh, the previous cent uh, centuries, translators paid little attention to what others before them had uh, written about translation, and uh, then uh, for uh, centuries there was a sterile debate since Cicero in classical antiquity uh, until uh, now. Uh, 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 and uh, 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 the sterile debate was, should it be literal, word for word, that is faithful, or free, sense for sense, that is clarity, logic, and elegant. Mm. And for centuries that debate was there, and um, 
it's only from 1800 when philology began to fragment and subdivide into independent modern disciplines uh, and uh, in the 1960s studies become uh, 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 from there on then an academic uh, um, discipline as uh, 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 an offshoot of philology and uh, 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 what we then see is that uh, knowledge about translation is organized systematically and uh, 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 so uh, uh, in, in a way, this, uh, uh, this uh, study of a discipline, uh, uh, in the study of a discipline, it's impossible for human beings to focus on everything around them. So what we have then from the 1960s is that people begin to uh, look on certain aspects, equivalence, what uh, um, uh, uh, covert, uh, 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 overt and uh, 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 so people then mm -hmm. investigate uh, certain um, uh, uh, angles uh, one at a time and um, uh, so we have various turns cultural the role of culture for example um, so it went through linguistic pragmatics culture society ideology power brain human personality meaning and um, so uh, uh, at this stage, uh, it emerged uh, uh, in a translation system or a translation complex. And uh, complexity thinking of theory provides a way to look at these various aspects of translation in a holistic way. And that's where we are um, at this stage. OK. Well, I want us to thank you for that overview. I want us to um, head now into Bible translation, given where we find ourselves in the um, 21st century. Um, but before we jump right into Bible translation, can you just can you just let us know who from antiquity, who from these preceding generations would you most like to sit down with for a chat? If you could pick anybody. Uh, uh, I hope I do not disappoint you on, on, on this question. Um, persons of name from antiquity have written records which are well studied. And if I had the choice to sit down for a meal, chat or coffee, I would rather do it with an initiator and translation team of a successful Bible trans lation project within the oral tradition hmm. uh, such a successful project in history uh, is uh, within the third language into which a complete bible was translated in uh, southern africa namely sesutu mm -hmm. the leader of the southern self-speaking people in the early 18s opened up his country, the Sutu land, or uh, currently known as Lesotho, to Bible translation work in 1833-1834. And uh, Mushweshwe acknowledged the importance of acquiring the skills from the farmers, the settlers, the hunters and adventurers who increasing, uh, increasingly moved across his borders from the south. He therefore welcomed the missionaries from the Paris Evangelical Missionary Society when they arrived at Tabo in 1833 as a source of information about the rest of the world. He placed them in strategically important parts of the kingdom where they gave the Sutu their first experience with Christianity, literacy and commodity, uh, uh, com commodity production for long distance trading and for com commodity production on farms and for trading a kind of pigeon language developed there to achieve communication between the dutch afrikaans speaking farmers and the speakers of sesotho and when translating the bible into sesotho this was a terminology um, the translators uh, of uh, the uh, first sesotho bible translation used by 1878, the complete Bible was translated by the missionaries or the Paris Evangelically Missionary Society. 
It was published in 1881 in one volume and is still widely in use. Uh, in contrast to the uh, unidirectional character of much uh, missionary translation, there was a unique reciprocal character of the Paris Missionary Society translation effort. What they do, the Bible was translated into Susutu, while Susutu prize poems were translated into French, hmm. which presupposed a positive attitude towards African oral poetry, yeah. most uncommon in uh, mid uh, 19th century in colonized uh, in colonized times and um, uh, it would be an honor for me to have this Sutu Bible translation team at a meal chat or coffee yes wow what a what a phenomenal story um, where, where can one read more about that uh, where can one get a, 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 an overview of that have have you written up something about this particular project or is there a good volume on this uh, so, uh, uh, it's an oral tradition, uh, there are uh, 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 bits of it is written up. Uh, uh, my colleague, uh, 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 Dr. Chocolo Makutuhane, wrote his PhD on mm. uh, Susitu Bible translation. So, uh, this is there. And then, um, in a volume, uh, uh, which is... Um, available uh, for free, you can download it, the Octa Theologica, uh, I can send you the link to it, and the whole, there is a full article uh, by Dr. Makutuhane and myself on, uh, on, on, on uh, this, um, uh, 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 the lessons which we learn from um, uh, this translation. In fact, uh, when this translation was finished, um, the Swiss uh, then took uh, some of the translators of Sesotho uh, to uh, the northern part of South Africa, where uh, the Bible was translated into Tsitsonga. And mm. uh, so the same method was used there. Uh, what was very interesting is that a lot of Sesotho uh, loanwords get into the Tsitsonga Bible. And if you do not know uh, uh, that uh, there were a Sesotho translator as part of the Sitsonga um, team, you, uh, 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 it is really hard to understand why uh, Sesotho get into uh, Sitsonga Bible. Hmm. Okay, good. We will, we will look out for that. Um, in 2002, Professor, you published a very helpful article entitled An Overview of Recent Developments and Translation Studies with Special Reference to the Implications for Bible Translation. Now, I'd like to walk through some of your major points here, some of the implications that you note in this article. You note, for example, that Bible translation, we should see Bible translation as normal translation. Now, in the past, some have tried to argue that um, the Bible, in fact, contains Holy Greek, that it contains Holy Spirit language, special language, that it isn't normal language in the Bible. So I just have to ask, um, can we really approach Bible translation like any other translation? Um, additionally, translation studies um, takes us through and, and tries to, uh, some in translation studies would have us dethrone the source text. And this makes a lot of people in Bible translation uncomfortable to think about dethroning the Bible. And uh, Anthony Pym, one translation scholar, has remarked, well, if you're going to dethrone the, if you're going to dethrone the source text, who's the new king? So I there's kind of multiple questions there all wrapped up into one, but I've just got to know, can we in fact take what we're learning from translation studies and apply it to Bible translation? Or should we ask, um, like uh, Tertur Tertur Tertullian, what does Jerusalem have to do with Athens? Yeah, so um, uh, to start off, um, uh, the translation of the Bible is normal translation in that it requires profound mm -hmm. factual knowledge, similar to medical, financial, technical translation in addition to cultural and linguistic knowledge. 
in this sense, Bible translation is a translation activity not substantially different from the translation of other texts belonging to a culture that is removed from the target re readers in time and space. It also implies that Bible translation, uh, translators should have a command over translation competence and also have to be actually trained in the field similar to medical, financial, etc. translators. New developments in translation studies uh, must be taken seriously and implemented in the practice of Bible translation as the, uh, the translators of financial, uh, 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 legal and other technical uh, translators. Uh, it is um, uh, this very important uh, that uh, 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 it is applied in the, and a very nice example is that of uh, Christiana Nord and her late husband, um, Klaus Berger, who translated together the Bible into uh, German, the New Testament into uh, German, and where they, uh, where she described the whole process and the role of uh, the, uh, the translator, the Bible translator, and um, then uh, all, uh, in the fact that uh, uh, it's uh, what uh, is, is again the split competence in terms of uh, uh, her husband's knowledge of the New Testament together with uh, her knowledge of translation studies and her work as a translator. Um, so, uh, uh, my view is that no new attempt at Bible transla uh, translation can afford to ignore the role of translation studies as a discipline. So, for example, that article of me which you referred to was part uh, uh, of a symposium in 2001 organized by the Bible Society of South Africa for the planning of the 2020 Bible translation. Uh, project which is now published uh, uh, in publishing process. Uh, it will be released on the 29th of November this year. So uh, we started with this uh, 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 translation studies context. What does translation studies offer us to, um, uh, 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 to do a new translation which is an emergent translation which uh, built on previous work and um, uh, so it's a retranslation because they were at this at that stage already two uh, existing translations in Afrikaans at least uh, published by the Bible Society and um, uh, uh, the fact is the research in terms of translation studies which were followed took us five years hmm. before we come to uh, a trans and uh, that, that whole project uh, is um, uh, based with in uh, a translation study. So there we start uh, started off. So uh, uh, it's very important when you start a project is that uh, uh, you uh, have to make uh, thorough research and mm. do not uh, a, a, a dump into it in a very quick way and think you can yes. translate. So the planning, uh, uh, the money spent and the time spent mm -hmm. on it pay off later on uh, in the quality of your product. Yes. If yes. it's not conceptualized in a, uh, in a right way, then uh, you as a translation consultant are struggling, struggling, struggling uh, to get a translation out because every day new problems are on the table, but if it's yeah. conceptualized, that problems are foreseen from the beginning. And yeah. uh, then it's not necessary to redo a translation, uh, which is then very costly because a uh, 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 time elapsed and donors are uh, angry because they do not see uh, their uh, product. Uh, 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 a person, uh, Mary Snell Hornby wrote already in 1988, I think, 
uh, and it's uh, published in 1995, a book, she's a, a Vienna-based scholar, teacher, and translator, and she wrote a book uh, on an integrated approach to translation based on text types. And she based it on six levels, and the Bible, uh, there she shows how Bible fits in normal translation. So on her level A, she say there are literary, uh, mm -hmm. then general language, and special language translations. Mm. Uh, and on level B, that is uh, in terms of the literary translation, there she put in Bible, stage film, lyric poetry, and mm -hmm. uh, etc. But uh, there is a place, and then she go on on level C, uh, uh, which uh, sub-disciplines are uh, 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 kick in in Bible translation as well as in others. Level D, uh, there she covers the translation process, which is relevant to Bible translations and uh, uh, similar translations within literary. Level E, uh, she covers areas of linguistics relevant to translation. And uh, level F, there she uh, looks at uh, stuff like alliteration rhythm and um, so what you have there is in a huge way uh, what happened in literary translation a lot of that happened in uh, also in bible translation and that's my view uh, is that uh, in terms of um, the uh, subject matter um, uh, bible has uh, 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 its own themes, uh, 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 there are uniquenesses in the Bible, but in the whole translation process, uh, in how you approach it, uh, there is not that uh, difference from, uh, uh, for example, a literary translation and other kinds of, of, of right. translation on this level. Bible translation, one uh, must not think it's uh, uh, a low-level activity. Bible translation uh, is on the same level as literary translation. And what makes me uh, sometimes fear is we uh, get translations uh, into uh, languages. Uh, and uh, my question is, uh, are they really literary? Uh, 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 do mm. they fulfill the literary standards? So mm. that uh, 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 helps a lot for the understandability of um, uh, uh, of uh, the uh, uh, of a Bible and of a text. So if it's good, uh, if you produce good literature in the yeah. target language, then actually uh, uh, you uh, you contribute in a huge way to the understanding uh, and to the uh, assistance of readership. Yeah. Uh, so uh, that is uh, in terms of normal translation. Must I go over to uh, the def uh, defrone, you also ask the defrone, Ning yeah, yeah. yeah. So, um, uh, uh, I do not think uh, that it is appropriate from my translation studies perspective to speak of the defroning uh, the source text. Hmm. Uh, the source text is still uh, 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 vitally important. What has changed, however, is the older view that the target text can mirror the source text so that it is equivalent. So it shows every that uh, people try to do it, and that's normally when, as a Bible translator, you really want to mirror the source text. Uh, that is ultimately impossible. Instead, the translator must choose aspects of the source text to represent in various ways using various strategies in the target text according to the scopus, the communicative function of the translation. Uh, the phrase defroning the source text was used in 2014 in an article by my colleague Edwin uh, Joseph Mohat, uh, Mohatlani uh, in the Journal of Social Science the, uh, entitled Defroning the Source Text a Scopus uh, theoretical perspective in Sesotho translation. Edwin was the head of the Department of African Languages at our university. However, with all 
due respect to Edwin, he seriously misunderstands the notion of Scopus theory with respect to the source text. Mm -hmm. What Scopus theory means is that there is no single way to represent the source text in the target text. Instead, the translator must represent the source text in the way agreed upon in the brief or the Scopus mm -hmm. so that there are satisfied clients that uh, is individuals in the community, language community who read and use a Bible translation. In Scopus theory, the translator is an agent who ensures that the source text is functionally rendered in the target text in a way that is loyal to the source text and loyal to the purpose of the text so that there are satisfied clients, readers of the text. Mm -hmm. The scopus may be to produce a source-oriented translation in which as many features of the source text as possible are conveyed in the target text. The scopus may be to, uh, uh, may be to produce a dynamic equivalent translation in which many of the features of the source text are domesticated to the target language and culture. The scopus may be to provide a translation for the deaf or for a Muslim majority context, or many other purposes. In each case, the source text is critically important. What differs are the strategies that are employed so that the target translation serves the purpose for which it was commissioned and um, with a result that the readers of the translation are satisfied with it. Because of the importance of the source text for Bible translation, our MA Bible translation at the University of the Free State requires prospective students to have two years of Hebrew or Greek before beginning so that they can work from the source text. We also have worked in the department to make the study of Hebrew available by Zoom so that Bible translators worldwide can study Hebrew and have first land access to the source text. The question of the source text can be viewed from other angles as well. With respect to the Old Testament, the question of source text ultimately must consider the textual history of the Hebrew Bible. An absolute source text uh, in the end uh, is an uh, unattainable idea, ideal. What we currently have is a text edition of the Hebrew Bible, the Biblia Hebraica Stuttgartensia, the five edition, that is primarily based on one manuscript, Codex Leningradensis, with some corrections and emendations based upon other Hebrew manuscripts and other textual traditions. The Greek Septuagint, the Aramaic Targums, the Syriac Peshitta, the Latin Vulgate. The Biblical Hebraica Quinta, the next generation of the critical edition of the Hebrew Bible is now in process. There is also an effort to produce a purely eclectic text, for example, by Michael Fox on Proverbs, in which the Hebrew text is one that uh, he has ret uh, retroverted from a cons consideration of all other available sources and which he thinks represent the earliest version of the text. This is highly speculative and would not be an appropriate version to use for a Bible a translate, a translation. A possibility in the opposite direction would be to accept a single manuscript. Uh, uh, for example, in the New Testament, you can do Codex uh, Sinaiticus as a representative of a source text. The same problems exist in determining the source text uh, for the New Testament. Another issue relates to the fact that some Christian traditions accept a particular source text as canonical rather than another one. Uh, the uh, translator must be sensitive to all of these questions in considering the source text. What we now, Kubis uh, Marais, Professor Kubis Marais, who uh, I view as one of the biggest uh, translation uh, study scholars at this moment, he talk uh, about uh, the uh, process of translation uh, and uh, he talk about the incipient system instead of a source text. Uh, so uh, what he um, uh, means by that uh, is that uh, uh, the process 
um, uh, uh, utilize uh, then the, uh, uh, when you uh, uh, work from the source text, uh, uh, you are influenced by other translations of the Bible. Mm -hmm. So um, uh, a translation of the Bible could have an effect on the interpretation of other translations of the Bible. And to be fair, the process um, is very uh, complex and uh, mm. it's not easy to, to have a source text and you, you translate. So uh, mm. uh, that is uh, the question of the defroning of, of a source text, right. which we see very important. Wow, okay. okay yeah, so so uh, another like... question uh, uh, which I missed, which you ask. Well, uh, there were there was a number of there were a number of questions rolled up in there. Um, I was thinking we could actually move on because something else I really struggle with is thinking about translation. We 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 mentioned the term equivalence. Um, I'm just wondering if equivalence has become a dirty word in translation studies to talk about the aims or the purpose of translation. And it's just struck me that we often frame translation in terms of these binary oppositions. You know, we get things like the translation versus the source text. We get formal versus functional. We get dynamic versus literal. Receptor versus the source. The target versus the source. The host versus the whatever. We get foreignizing versus domesticating. Concordant versus contextual. Target oriented versus source oriented. I'm running out of air. I mean, the list could continue. What do you think is the best way for us to conceptualize and talk about translation? Is, is, is there a place for talking about equivalence or are we limited to these sort of binary oppositions? Yeah. So uh, uh, in terms of equivalence become a dirty word, I do not uh, see equivalence as a dirty word. Uh, it is however critical to understand that equivalence is not absolute in a translation. A target text can be equivalent to the source text in certain respects, but it can never be equivalent to the source text in every respect. Mm -hmm. One must therefore be careful to nuance equivalence with respect to tra Bible translation in which respects does not want equivalence in accordance with the translation brief. Uh, 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 or let I repeat, in which respects does one want equivalence in accordance with the translation brief and uh, scopus. So in terms of the binaries, uh, uh, th that uh, uh, is a long debate and that shows us how translation studies in fact emerged. And uh, so uh, 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 you have, uh, it started, the first person started, uh, uh, it uh, was uh, way back, Venuti, uh, 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 use Schleiermacher, and uh, the, it started with, with, uh, with Schleiermacher. But uh, what is it about? Uh, the first thing uh, is about the role of alterity. Hmm. Uh, it's again the otherness. So do you want to keep the otherness or do you want to uh, get away from uh, the otherness? So, and that uh, brings us to this uh, binary uh, um, uh, 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 oppositions which we have. So Professor Quibus Marais then uh, began to think in terms of uh, uh, complex, uh, a complex a complexity thinking. Uh, uh, in which he say, uh, we move through modernist uh, times mm -hmm. and we moved uh, through um, postmodernist times uh, in our thinking. So uh, translation studies and our Bible translation, uh, 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 one never thinks you are influenced by it, but it was uh, uh, the modernist thinking and the postmodernist thinking, especially in deconstru uh, deconstruction. Uh, the, this uh, um, influence us. And the influence was that uh, uh, we work with reductionism. And what you have on the, if you talk about overt, you reduce uh, your thinking to one aspect. Mm -hmm. And uh, what Kubis, uh, uh, Professor Kubis Marie say, we have to take a step back. Mm -hmm. 
and uh, then uh, look uh, how uh, you can address this binary. Mm -hmm. uh, and um, so uh, the one way in Bible translation, so uh, 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 Cynthia and my thinking about uh, this goes around um, uh, how to cross this on the one hand to uh, keep the alterity on mm. the one hand and on the other hand to make uh, a, a, a Bible translation intelligible. Uh, yeah. If you are uh, too hard on the alterity, your translation become unintelligible. If you uh, relax too much, then at the end, you, uh, it does not look like a translation. It looks like a written text uh, in a, a language, and it does not reflect uh, that. So uh, one way uh, which uh, Sinfer and I conceptualize it is by the use of paratexts. And uh, so we have huge literature. We call it metatext. Uh, uh, the reason why we use metatext is to distinguish it from the uh, uh, the uh, computer program on Bible translation para texts. Yeah. Otherwise, people uh, do not think it. But uh, that was uh, 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 we now use meta text slash para text uh, because in translation studies yeah. people okay. uh, para texts more than meta texts. And um, okay. so one way is that. And for example, uh, that. Uh, um, uh, 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 an example of uh, uh, international Bible translations using uh, 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 recently uh, paratext in a huge way is, for example, uh, Robert Alter, uh, Alter's 2019, uh, the Hebrew Bible is English translation in a lot of uh, volumes. It's like a commentary, but uh, in fact that uh, introduces a new generation of Bible uh, translations. Uh, the same is a shocking Bible uh, uh, by Everett Fox, uh, 24, uh, uh, I think the last one is 2014, the other was in, uh, uh, from uh, 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 1995 or uh, uh, was, uh, has two, vol uh, 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 two volumes on this. Uh, the, also, the 2020 translation of Afrikaans uh, make a, 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 in a huge way uh, a, a use uh, footnotes, uh, a, a, a word list, and uh, mm -hmm. so that is a one way to do it. The other way is that uh, uh, we begin to use uh, Bible performance criticism. So, Dr. Makatuani, in a way, uh, to uh, especially when you work within a uh, oral tra uh, tradition, uh, then uh, 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 oral performance become a very important uh, uh, way. So oral performance and uh, he, he work in, uh, uh, and to, uh, for example, to create concepts which one, uh, for example, reconciliation, forgiveness, a lot mm -hmm. of um, uh, uh, within African culture, forgiveness is many times uh, seen as a weakness. And mm -hmm. uh, he actually worked to show that that is a virtue to, to have. And uh, someone who can forgive uh, such a person can be proud of himself if he is in a position to forgive. But you have to uh, create that kind of of concept. So uh, together, this uh, with to uh, to implement authority, uh, you need to um, uh, to utilize. So there are other ways. So what I force our students in their research projects: uh, How do you actually uh, do performance? Uh, some of our students. Uh, uh, work on art. How can you utilize the, uh, the visual uh, mm. in, uh, uh, in in Bible translation to make uh, uh, to uh, uh, to explain the authority to to bring it out? And yeah. I think there are huge ways. So uh, the project uh, which we are working on is is how can you within a complex thinking. Uh, without choosing the one or the other, 
uh, yes. uh, respect, a uh, big respect for the source text, and uh, but also respect for the target text, for mm -hmm. uh, and. Um, uh, the, uh, the audience in the target text for the readers. How can you make uh, a, a be responsible in the way that you can serve? Uh, by, uh, and uh, by this, uh, to uh, return to your question, uh, uh, that's a way uh, I think uh, we must go around the binary thinking. It's not wrong. It, it's uh, it's actual ways how you can translate a text and there uh, can be certain circumstances and there are successful translations. The yeah. Bible translations done within this and that does not diminish uh, the work which was done there. Mm. I hope okay. I answer the, uh, your question. Yeah, no, that, that, that is wonderful. I appreciate um, moving past kind of um, the binary thinking to more complex thinking in ways that we can buttress or, or support um, the goal of the translation through paratextual material. I think a lot of the attendees will find that a helpful way to think about um, translation, helping communities accomplish their goals for their projects, and then finding creative ways to make that happen, to bridge this gap um, between two cultures as we stand kind of between two worlds. Um, yeah, there so it's, are sometimes uh, negativity around the meta text. People say they do not write, uh, people do not read footnotes or, uh, but yeah. uh, I think it's a, a, a as a, 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 a translator, as an agent and person yeah. in a church using a translate uh, translation, have to, uh, we have to find new ways uh, when you get at a crucial footnote, you uh, have to prepare and at a crucial footnote, you stop the reading and you explain and then you mm. continue or repeat it. Right. And um, uh, also uh, uh, in this Bible study, uh, force people to uh, utilize a footnote, ask uh, mm. uh, factual questions right. in a Bible study so that you force people to read and uh, that's a new way to engage with uh, with the scripture, and um, mm -hmm. uh, I, uh, a, a lot of knowledge you suddenly have in 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 uh, in one volume, and mm -hmm. um, so it's hard to publish. It's a thicker uh, 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 Bible, uh, but uh, if uh, you uh, focus on the alterity only, not dogmatic. Uh, um, kind of uh, uh, issues must not kind of get in there. It must uh, stuff which pertains to the source text. The source culture. If you uh, work around that, uh, then it's 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 possible. And we have examples uh, in this new generation of Bible translations, um, uh, uh, existing examples to follow. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yes, excellent. So it seems, Professor, like um, translation studies is encouraging us to take a largely descriptive approach to translation uh, rather than uh, what you've called a normative analysis or a prescriptive approach um, to Bible translation. And I'm just thinking, in my role as a Bible translation consultant, um, stakeholders in the various projects aren't necessarily looking to me to help describe issues that I see in translation but they're looking for me to speak into and be a stakeholder, speak into the projects and give advice on translation. And I'm just wondering how we can square that, um, square this um, sort of approach. You know, we, we think about the idea of a good translation and the story that we used as an introduction of the Tanzanian translator, I use that when I'm teaching translators, I just pull that story out and I have them read it and we just discuss is this guy a good translator or not? You know, is he accomplishing um, the goals of his, uh, of the initiator, et cetera? And we just use that to explore some of these ideas. So I'm just wondering in your work as a translation consultant, how do you bring this knowledge of translation studies to a Bible translation project while also being loyal to the various stakeholders? How do you see yourself within the project? Are you telling people how to translate or how do you see yourself? So, uh, first instance, I will never tell people how to translate. Mm. So, um, the, the fact is, uh, fortunately, the team we are working with, 
uh, are an excellent team. That I must say, so I, I'm very blessed. But uh, I was a very latecomer in that project. So um, the fact uh, uh, there was conceptualize, uh, concept, uh, conceptualization and uh, what uh, we, uh, uh, I couldn't, you can't change uh, the route to follow midstream uh, of halfway. So uh, what was done was to uh, follow uh, what uh, uh, was uh, initiated. And uh, the, the important thing is, uh, as a consultant, you, uh, uh, in the first instance, you look, are the errors? Errors mean that they leave out pieces, uh, 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 are they really mistranslation? And um, uh, so that is a bottom line. And uh, 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 that, that happens in, in every translation project. So errors get in that something is misspelled or uh, I, uh, 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 it's like uh, uh, what happened in text criticism where mm -hmm. sometimes stuff is, is skipped and it goes through many eyes, but uh, uh, people didn't see it uh, at, at a stage. So uh, that is uh, the bottom line. The, uh, then uh, what a translation a consultant in my is that you have to respect again uh, the source text, you have to respect the target text and mm -hmm. you have to listen to them. What do they really want to achieve? And um, within the Scopus, uh, you as a translator as a, is an agent. So there you have to uh, think, is it possible or not possible? So uh, within the translation brief, uh, who set out uh, what, I, uh, what, uh, what is going there, it can be written, but the, uh, that one I conceptualized from what they are doing and uh, we could reconstruct a translation brief. Right. And, okay. uh, with, uh, uh, but uh, 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 the important work is that uh, you have to check is there false friends? Do they misinterpret hmm. uh, a, a, a text uh, which uh, can cause a clash in, in, in the culture? So hmm. uh, 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 that is the important thing is to, uh, to uh, so-called, uh, uh, let I use it in a very broad way, false friends. Mm -hmm. And then uh, the other thing is consistency. Uh, hmm. Are they consistent? Um, uh, do they utilize uh, the same words in various, they move to a new book, uh, the same uh, uh, words uh, uh, are they, that they, uh, are they consistent? We are now on the checking, for example, the Old Testament are finished. Uh, we are busy checking uh, the, uh, before the end of September, we have to finish the Gospels. And uh, what we now are doing is to compare the consistency. Paratext uh, mm have -hmm. that uh, parallel, so uh, they are busy uh, and we are uh, busy checking that. And we also uh, see uh, 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 are the parallels consistent. Right. Uh, but, but and professor, uh, then, uh, quotations from the, uh, it's now to link yeah. up the Old Testament with this New Testament text. And that's the work which we are doing. So, um, yeah, but uh, Professor, uh, can I interrupt you to ask one question here? Um, is this value of consistency something that you've imported into the project for them? Or is the value of consistency something that they identified and asked you to help them accomplish for their project? Yeah, so uh, uh, they didn't ask me, uh, uh, but. Um, uh, 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 that qu comes from my uh, 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 from translation uh, 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 aspect. They are a good team, so uh, in in effect, uh, uh, it's it's really that um, uh, you will find uh, uh, a really. Uh, uh, but uh, the the important thing is to check uh, 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 can this translation go into a church, be used yeah. over 50 years 
uh, still be uh, uh, representing the the, uh, the the source text in the sense mm -hmm. that uh, uh, it can be uh, uh, there uh, would be a re a revisions necessary. But uh, mm -hmm. what one try is not to take wrong turns, but uh, to check mm -hmm. uh, uh, some stuff we do not know. But uh, uh, when it's need to be uh, 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 after us, uh, a next consultant, or I hope they, they themselves can actually um, uh, uh, do the revision, uh, that they can follow and see, oh, it's not totally wrong, but we yeah. can refine. Okay. And uh, that, uh, that, that is uh, when you actually work in terms. So to ask again about your, uh, to say about your good, bad translation, um, yeah. I think uh, 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 it's uh, good or bad. Um, uh, it's instead uh, uh, we perform, a, again, a descriptive analysis of translations uh, uh, in the sense how does a translation actually function? So what is more important, uh, they go and uh, check the translation in the church. So uh, the leaders in the church is also involved. And um, uh, 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 the fact is, uh, uh, if you do not have the church and the church leaders on board, uh, yes. you, you, you are going to face a problem. I know... Uh, of uh, uh, people involved in uh, so-called failed translations because mm -hmm. um, uh, the engagement. So that is also, uh, so the important thing is that uh, a, translate, a translation consultant must not be hard-handed. Mm. Uh, one, uh, there is humanity. You have to listen. In fact, uh, uh, what you want at the end is a uh, satisfied customer, mm. uh, which means uh, a reader of the Bible. And yes. uh, uh, people must love, oh, uh, that's the reason why I pick the Susutu uh, uh, mm. uh, uh, 1871 translation to... Um, uh, uh, there is a satisfied people love the, that translation. Mm -hmm. It's uh, 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 many years, uh, 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 150 years more or less uh, later, and people still read and use it. It's a, wow. a very important Bible, and um, uh, 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 that was what is rich, and uh, uh, that I think is a way. Uh, 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 it's not my doc. Uh, uh, I'm uh, a uh, within Dutch Reform, uh, and um, mm -hmm. uh, the uh, uh, the uh, translation uh, for it uh, is more or less within Anglican, uh, the Anglican Church. But uh, I can't now force my views on them. So uh, the the fact is. Uh, 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 that uh, 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 is not uh, you. You have to keep. Um, uh, you have to keep um, uh, 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 in in a way uh, uh, very responsible how you you actually perform your sure. transfer. You, uh, the hum yeah. humanity is very important. Yes. Yes. Okay. Well, we are coming towards the end of our time here. Um, regrettably, I have so many more questions that I could have asked. We're gonna try to wrap things up here in the next five minutes. I did have one angry attendee write in um, saying, they, they demand an answer wanting to know why there's not a larger section treating the paragogic noon in your biblical uh, Hebrew reference grammar. We won't go there. You know, the paragogic noon, we'll have to set up a, another co separate conference one day to treat that. So we'll just move on from that question. I don't know why they're so angry, but we'll just, we'll just keep moving on here. Professor, I need you to help us understand, um, in your opinion, what is one idea in biblical studies or Bible translation that should just go away? Yeah, so uh, um, what is very important, I think, is... Um, recognition of uh, the source text. 
we really uh, have to think in terms of Bible translation that uh, 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 we are in a, a time of decolonizing, decolonization. And uh, uh, what I tell my students uh, uh, many times, uh, you must be better than the colonizer. Mm. So uh, do not, uh, we have to uh, get away from the idea to make translations from English Bibles into African languages. Uh, uh, take the time, uh, as you plan a project, uh, in the beginning, uh, teach, uh, 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 all Bible translators I met are very good with language and mm. they acquire language very easily. So uh, what is important uh, 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 is that a translation emerge. You translate it now, but to keep it alive, you have to translate it again. Uh, there must be revisions. And so uh, around a Bible translation, the investment that must be made to teach uh, the translators uh, Greek and Hebrew. Mm. That mm. is uh, one important thing. Then, no, uh, that's this, not, sorry, Professor, that's not an idea that needs to go away. It sounds like you want to emphasize um, but, language learning, but I, you, I, I know something that needs to go away. What do you hear when you go to the Bible translation conference? What do you hear people repeating and you think to yourself, oh, I just wish that idea would go away? I've got to know. <laughs> Uh, so, uh, uh, no, uh, uh, what uh, needs to go away is uh, the, the view of English short sticks. That is what needs to go oh, away. Okay. That's right. if, uh, so, if, uh, uh, so uh, what uh, needs to go away is isolation. So, mm. I do not like, uh, and that's not uh, I, uh, the Dallas Conference as such, or, uh, uh, but mm. what I think must go away is that we think we can have this little small kind mm. of uh, conferences, exclusive, mm. uh, normally invited people. Um, mm. What is very important is that we have to uh, uh, be participate in the international fora for the fields. And uh, so uh, the, uh, the uh, uh, it's uh, to do the positive, so the idea of isolation, then uh, try to attend EST. L uh, the, uh, last year uh, we attended uh, EST in Stellenbosch, uh, it was European um, uh, Association of the Society of Translation Studies. They were in Stellenbosch, there was a panel on Bible translation. Okay, uh, excellent. And I have a panel in 2015 in uh, uh, Bra Brazil, uh, 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 IHATIS conference. There we actually uh, have a Bible panel. And so uh, there is in the interaction with translation studies and uh, uh, as you see this afternoon, it's, uh, we can get a hell of a lot of knowledge from um, uh, uh, translation studies, uh, which we can apply to Bible translation. And uh, so my view and then also uh, uh, for example the uh, 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 people working in Africa there is uh, a journal of um, uh, translation studies in Africa uh, which is for free I will send you also the link which you can okay. put on your uh, uh, page uh, and then um, there's also an association uh, the, the, uh, 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 this year, a big, uh, uh, one is now postponed to next year, but this year in June, it would be in Ghana. Uh, I, and uh, so what is important is that uh, they, uh, 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 you hear uh, uh, translators in every, uh, other areas, and, yes. uh, but uh, you can also put your translation studies uh, or Bible translation experience there on the table and yes. uh, uh, that interaction uh, that is uh, a very but uh, very uh, uh, in, uh, important and um, then also yes. uh, what needs to go away is uh, uh, and that's not <laughs> the Bible translators as such but uh, I, I have huge problems with 
the people studying Septuagin, Targum, Peshitta, the uh, uh, full guide, there are a hell of a lot of knowledge there. And yes. uh, uh, they do not take, no, they uh, studied it as text on its own right and not yep. as translations. Ah. But uh, there could be huge interaction between mm. uh, 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 the ancient translation yes. and, uh, uh, and Bible translation. Uh, so really, I think um, that is an idea mm. which we have to pressure to uh, yeah. see it's again this isolated group who yeah. uh, 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 try to build a scholarship, but uh, since they are too small, uh, 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 they go in a wrong direction when you look yeah. at translation studies. So there are yeah. people, uh, Bible translators doing it, uh, a, a good credit for, for them. And, um, uh, but, uh, 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 that is uh, so that is all three things yes. no that's um, great and that is a wonderful segue uh thank you professor we i've just there's one final participant i want to invite into this conversation while we wrap things up he is an ex excellent example i think of integrating bible translation into translation studies and that's dr sema hane who is uh has a phd in translation studies He's now a translation, uh, translation consultant in training with the United Bible Societies. Wonderful scholar um, who I believe has studied the translation of Shakespeare into Arabic, but he's now bringing that into the world of Bible translation. And if you would allow us the time, Professor, um, Dr. Hanna has a question that he would like to address to you, if that's okay. That's okay. Okay. So Sama, do you wanna put on your video or just do audio? Uh, I can do audio now. I cannot see uh, how I can do video. Um, mm -hmm. Maybe we... I promoted him. I promoted him to a panelist, so he should be able to get the video on, I think. All right. He yes, I can see that. Yes. Can you see me now? Yeah, there you are. Welcome. <laughs> Welcome Thank you to so much, Drew. Yes, no, you Thank sent you. in. Can you help us please, uh, Dr. Hanna, can you help us wrap all this up together? I just feel like I've heard so much information and I'm just swimming in translation studies here. You have a very pertinent question you want to ask, but can you just help tie this all together for us, please? You're, You're absolutely your... right, Drew. There is a lot of food for thought here. Thank you so much, um, Professor Node, for the... Um, um, for the different insights, uh, wonderful insights that we need, we really need too much time to digest that and think about it and reflect on it and take it to the, to the area of Bible translation. Um, a number of questions came to mind, probably one question that would help us to try to put all of these insights together comes from a real issue, comes from a real problem in the Bible translation world. Um, I am new to this world, but I have been observing that world a few years ago. Um, and that has to do with what used to be called contextualized Bible translation. And I'm glad you mentioned these important concepts of alterity and otherness. And we all know that the Bible has been translated to different multiple others. Uh, people outside the church, people are not necessarily Christians. Uh, so the Bible has been translated for different faiths. The Bible has been translated in ex-colonized countries uh, where uh, the Bible has been historically seen as an agent of colonization. Um, the Bible has been, um, there have been some attempts which try to accommodate um, gender neutral language. So these are issues in the context of the target culture. So my question to you, Professor Node, is what kind of insights translation studies can help us, especially in its recent turns and paradigms, what kind of lessons we can take from the sociological approaches to translation, from post-colonialist approaches to translation, from gender studies approaches to translation that can help us not only to find answers to our questions about context, but insights that can help us to ask the right questions about context in Bible translation. Mm. Thank you. So, uh, thank you. Thank you very much. Um, the uh, important thing uh, in terms of uh, contextualization 
is uh, uh, what we have uh, is, for example, um, uh, the trauma context. You have uh, the HIV uh, 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 context, a uh, reading, uh, HIV reading. One has now also the echo reading. Then uh, uh, we have uh, 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 this, uh, for example, the Panare uh, case, uh, um, uh, where uh, you have also uh, a, a, a context. Um, uh, so the Im uh, important thing, uh, uh, I, I think, uh, my answer would lie within the frame of of of. Uh, what uh, I say is that uh, we, uh, the first thing is that uh, uh, contextual interpretation or interpretation and translation is not that different. Uh, uh, so uh, the most important thing is again, uh, the, the uh, alterity have first to be acknowledged. So uh, what you have there is a source text uh, and what is ongoing there, that must be respected in the first instance. This is a one horizon. The other horizon uh, uh, or the context is the, uh, the, uh, uh, the readers uh, uh, the, uh, uh, who are going to uh, for whom uh, this translation is done or for whom uh, the Bible is interpreted. And uh, so that uh, needs also to, uh, to be respected. So you have um, uh, those two ways. So, for example, in a uh, echo reading of the Bible, uh, you can look, there are in Genesis 2, uh, verse 7, uh, 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 they uh, talk about people as farmers. So I think the NIV translated uh, it in that way. But um, the problem you have then for that context uh, of translation is that you make immediately uh, the farmers the only responsible people of echo, while Genesis 2 verse 7 uh, pertains to each of us. So uh, each of us um, have uh, the uh, 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 or has a responsibility to be uh, uh, responsible to uh, nature. I think that's very clear. Uh, 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 it's called in the Bible. So um, uh, to uh, 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 implement uh, uh, this is uh, uh, the context uh, try to uh, get uh, uh, nearer as possible to the source text again uh, and uh, do not interpret the source text too easily for a specific uh, 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 and use a term there when you translate uh, to uh, uh, fulfill only that kind of uh, of reading. Uh, so uh, uh, contextuality, uh, 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 if it's too much on the context and too little on the source, uh, then uh, then you uh, uh, run into the trouble that you have a uh, misreading. So. Again, go to uh, the source text, implement, um, uh, 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 in, uh, 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 try to understand that authority and make it relevant uh, for the context you are working in. So uh, uh, I know that uh, 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 I know of uh, places where Contextuality uh, uh, the, uh, plays a, a play a huge role uh, in uh, a, a theological education, uh, but uh, 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 what makes me very fearful is that uh, uh, it's again from uh, a Bible translation from which that 
the, the uh, context, uh, uh, the contextual interpretation uh, is done. So uh, that uh, in broad uh, uh, terms is how I see uh, it, but uh, if um, uh, are, are you, uh, 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 do I answer your question? <laughs> uh. Absolutely, thank you so much. I know th there is a lot of questions to be asked about context and contextualization, but I'm aware of the running of time. Thank you so much again. No, yes, thank you. Thank you, Dr. Hanna. Yes, so it sounds like, um, Professor, that the source text can in many ways still be king. And in those of us working in Bible translation, trying to integrate translation studies. Is that an accurate, is that, a, is that a takeaway? Is that a reasonable takeaway from our time here together? Is that in some ways the, or am I completely missing the point? Can the source text still in some ways be king? Yeah, so um, uh, the source text, uh, I remember what I say in terms of translation, uh, uh, in uh, complexity uh, uh, thinking. It's an incipient text. So uh, there are uh, 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 important stuff in the source text, uh, but there is also uh, uh, influences, for example, already existing translation, other texts, you have text critical uh, texts in Bible translation. Uh, we, uh, it would be easy if we had one uh, autographer and it's there, and we still understand the um, the uh, uh, the uh, authority of it. Mm, uh, but yeah. uh, what I try to say, uh, if uh, uh, you, uh, you think you can represent a source text 100% in a translation, uh, that is not uh, uh, possible. For that reason, there are strategies how to do it in a responsible way and a sophisticated way from, uh, 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 and that pertains to uh, uh, every translation across uh, cultures. And uh, uh, so uh, the, the fact is uh, uh, the source text is important. It's not different, mm. but uh, uh, you have, for example, what still uh, is valid within complexity thinking is, for example, the functionalist uh, approach. What uh, are you going to do? Uh, 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 the fulfillment of uh, the uh, readership uh, 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 the f uh, for whom the text was then uh, translated for. Okay. Yes, wonderful. Thank you so much. Well, Professor, this has been a very enriching time. I have been on the front lines of this conversation, and I cannot wait to watch the recording just to be able to take more notes and process, to continue to process, continue to chew on everything that you fed us. So I want to thank you, sincerely thank you for giving up your time. Um, this afternoon to be with us. Um, we appreciate your work in the Ministry of Bible Translation as well as your work in academia. We want to take some time now, uh, my colleague Harry, we want to pray a, a word of blessing over you that the Lord would bless your ministry both in academia and in Bible Translation, if that's all right. Let's pray. <clears throat> Father God, we thank you for Professor Nalde and for Cynthia and the work they've been doing. We thank you that they're working to keep us from being in an echo chamber in which we only talk to ourselves, and they bring us into the outer world of translation studies in general and help us to see that Bible translation is translation. Thank you for the work they're doing, working with the translation team as consultants. Thank you also for the students that they teach for those whose lives they lead and the research that we then can use to help make Bible translation, studies of the source text, exegesis better. Thank you again for all that they've done, for all that they're doing and will do. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Harry. Thank you once again, Professor. Um, I don't know if you've seen Professor, but loads of people have been writing into the chat window. Um, to express their thanks and how much they appreciate everything. So I know I'm not the only one. So you'll want to leave, read those before you leave. But um, good, you are free to go. Thanks again.
I think we're just gonna, um, Harry, my colleague and I, we like, often like to stay on and read all the chat messages and everything. But if you've got any last concluding words, now is a great time. If there's anything final that you wanna say, we'll let you have the last word. Thank you, Drew, for this opportunity. Uh, 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 my important uh, message is, uh, uh, I hope your work you are doing um, uh, is blessed and uh, uh, that uh, uh, the uh, Lord uh, will give uh, you wisdom in the work you are uh, performing. That is uh, the uh, most important. Uh, we can have a lot of uh, books and be clever in terms of theories, but uh, at the end, uh, it's uh, you need wisdom to incorporate uh, yeah. this uh, in the service uh, of uh, our uh, 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 way of living on earth and for yeah. we, uh, the Lord put, put us here to serve and um, that uh, that is important and uh, we can't waste time we have to use every day and every day accounts in, yes. in a way so we must yes, count the days how to do our work thank you drew again for yes, the no thank you you know one area that i still like i still feel like i lack wisdom is on the pedagogic noon so that angry attendee was indeed myself so in the third edition of your reference grammar i'm going to be looking for an appendix on the pedagogic noon you think you can do that for us <laughs> so, uh, 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 if the Lord saves me, uh, then uh, uh, then uh, uh, there will be a revision. So, okay. uh, 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 it's not in my hands, but um, uh, 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 the, uh, uh, what we take into account is criticism. So that was uh, which uh, were taken uh, in account for the revision and new developments. Yeah. And uh, I think you are right. Uh, the, uh, uh, a lot of uh, new stuff will be. The field is moving. Suddenly, it was always syntax. Now, one see um, also the complex thinking which we talk about this afternoon in terms of translation studies is also happening within linguistics and uh, uh, where we actually do um, a phonological, morphological, syntactic, semantic stuff separately in silos. Uh, it's now study together. Uh, we, I think we arrive uh, in academia and in uh, our thinking at a very nice time or the beginning of a nice time where a huge integrated approach can be followed. Yeah, this is very exciting. And thank you for being a, a thought leader on that. Thank you for pioneering the way for us. We hope to walk in your footsteps. Well, I will let you go, Professor. Blessings on you and uh, take care and stay warm. Thank, thank you very much. Thank All you. All right. Okay. Okay. Bye. Bye.